Welcome to this brief overview lecture on Talcott Parsons and Robert Merton, which is based on slides adapted from the publisher's version for Michelle Dillon's Introduction to Sociological Theory. Talcott Parsons, Harvard professor of social relations, was a towering figure in sociology. His life spanned a period of enormous transformation in the United States and Europe, including two world wars. By education, training, and his own work, he bridged the emergence of American sociology to classical European theory. Parsons provided the catalyst for contemporary theory. Like many in his generation, he wanted sociology to be developed as a theoretically informed empirical science. Thus, he focused on his abstract, generalized conceptualization of the social system. His theory was developed to facilitate and synthesize rigorous description and analysis. Parsons is best known for his major book, The Social System, published in 1951. This is a dry and difficult to read book in which Parsons presents his system's approach to society and social action. Each societal system has four primary subsystems, which sociologists memorize during their graduate school years as A, G, I, L. A, G, I, L. Latency. Social action is voluntaristic. Social actors choose among various culturally bounded goals and means. So actors or acts choose between ends and goals in concrete situations or environments according to their values. Industrialization as the key driver of modernization, produces social differentiation, known by Durkheim as the division of labor, thus the need for stabilizers. Industrialization produces in institutional differentiation and specialization, separate functional and institutional spheres, separate but interdependent institutions and spheres are integrated by shared value commitments. Structural functionalism as an approach focuses on the functions of social institutions and structures and the maintenance of system equilibrium in the face of modernization. Modernization is driven by economic or industrial development and institutional differentiation. Modernization includes urbanization, the expansion of education, secularization, or religious decline. Modernization also means changing norms favoring achievement over ascription or inherited family status. And finally, modernization is uneven. Modernization produces more equality of opportunity. That is, in the move from ascription to achievement, opportunity is open. In a modern economy, a modern industrial economy, individuals have greater life chances than prior or in prior domains of, for example, monarchies where all status was ascribed. Status differentials persist, but these are achievement-based and 
the status or resource competition for Parsons produces structural strain. There are separate family and gender roles in this rather traditional uh, approach to sociology that are functional to the social order. For example, the norms characterizing professional occupational relationships differ from family relationships. This is part of what Parsons calls pattern variables. Similarly, institutionalized norms in modern societies differ from those in traditional societies. Again, this is part of what Parsons refers to as pattern variables. Pattern variables refers to uh, norms that are institutionalized value orientations which typically distinguish modern from traditional societies and which have contrasting orientations. Thus, we have the universalistic versus the particularistic, specificity versus diffusion, achievement versus ascription, neutrality versus affectivity, and self versus the collective. This diagram purports to illustrate the Parsonian theory. Note that the macro level is, con is connected to the micro level largely through socialization. We will study more of Merton's work in week nine. Merton is noted for the idea of middle range theory and theorizing which allows for close analysis of empirical realities. Other aspects of Merton's work we will read about are his writings on social roles and role theory and his functional analysis. Perhaps most illustrative is Merton's theory of deviance and structural strains. Merton noted the frequent gap among subpopulations between culturally prescribed goals and the institutional means for achievement of these goals. For example, everyone might want to make a lot of money, a goal, but not everyone has the resources, education, or wherewithal to achieve this. Merton refers to this as structural strain and thusly observed four modes of adaptation. The modes are illustrated on the table on the slide, the conformist who accepts both the goals and the means, the innovator who accepts the goals but doesn't have the means, the ritualist who accepts the means but doesn't accept the goals, that's somebody who simply performs the actions, the retreatist who retreats from both the goals and the means, a, a type highly typical and appropriate, so to speak, in the uh, 60s and 70s with the beat generation and then later uh, hippies and other people who retreated from both the goals and the means of society. And finally, the rebel uh, who substitutes the goals and the means for other goals and means. Whether you agree or disagree with the orientation of the structural functionalist, this paradigm of perspective was a dominant one for a full generation and continues to influence sociological theory, theorizing and empirical research.